Tenakoto. I'm Michael Winter and it's great to be here at the National New Zealand Flax Collection at Manaki Whenua Land Care Research in Lincoln. I'm with Katerina Tawiri talking to her about scientific and cultural perspectives of her work with Harakeke. Katerina. Kia ora. How are you doing? Michael, good. It's lovely, to, lovely to be talking to you. Lovely spot to meet here at the Pahara Kiki. It is, it's Kiki. great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and a beautiful day too. Yeah. Tell me, how did you get involved in the, in the work in Harakeke? So, um, I made myself a few notes here because the questions were put to me, uh, sent to me beforehand. Um, because there's so many things I always want to talk about, but mm -hmm. we only have 20 minutes roughly. So. Um, I was born basically with an interest in plants and we just talked about this before yeah. about healing and stuff. So I grew up in Switzerland and I had a love for all things growing. Even as a child I would do little baskets and I would use sitches and things like this. So I always mm -hmm. felt um, connected to plants and also to um, agriculture because I then actually studied agriculture in Switzerland. And my mother grew her own witches and um, and I, my first thing I did as a little kid, I grew a garden with flowers in the middle of the forest. And so I had an interest in plants mm -hmm, always. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to um, Aotearoa, I um, uh, married uh, to a Maori. And um, I got inspired mm -hmm. into Mataranga Maori and all things around um, New Zealand plants because they were new to me. Yeah, yeah. And I also did um, CPIT, then CPIT courses in Raranga, weaving with Harakeke. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got more and more involved into the weaving and finding resources for doing my weaving. Mm -hmm. And I was forever looking up for good Harakeke. And that's how I found the National New Zealand Flex Collection here. Okay. Because people said, you can go here and harvest. And of course here the flexes are all um, named mm -hmm. and you know what you get. So if you want to weave a specific sort of a kete, um, you can just go to the database and look which cultivar of all of these and uh, you go straight to it. And so you know what you get as if you go out in nature, um, you have to try, it's trial and error. So oh, I didn't realise that there was, this, that was, yes. uh, there was a specific plant for a specific job. Absolutely, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you, to get back to your question, um, it was basically 12 years of being here, of um, listening to scientists mm -hmm. and people who have the knowledge. So, I picked up all of this around the Harakiki plant because I come from right. Switzerland, I didn't know even it existed when yeah. I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and just found this deep interest uh, because I found out it is everything about the plant is culturally connected mm -hmm, it's connected mm -hmm. with mataranga maori so i really got the base, best of both worlds mm -hmm. i got the scientific perspective of my colleagues here right. especially sue shield mm -hmm. who helped me a lot and botanists and ecologists and um, also te wanangawa te aroa mm -hmm, tertiary mm -hmm. institute in new zealand yep. i got the other perspective, Mataranga Māori and the actual skills of weaving from, so I've been very lucky. So it's like total immersion in Harakeke. Yes. And exactly. I notice as you talk that you've got earrings. Did you make those? No, they're from Hokitika. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they're made from Harakeke and yeah, yeah and yeah, bone yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So how do you how do you work from both the scientific and the cultural perspective? How do I work? So was it, was it, did it probably, evolve or was yeah. it a, a deliberate choice? It was, no, it was not a deliberate choice. It was just evolved because firstly I had this passion for plants and I always liked the interaction of plants and humans, which we call ethnobotany. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just a purely plant person, but I actually enjoy to find out how plants affect humans and humans mm -hmm. affect mm -hmm. plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, hence my personal interest, which I don't live here at Maraki Whenua, mm -hmm. of healing, you know, properties of plants and um, nutritional values of yeah. plants also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how, yeah, I've always been interested in a, a holistic view of the plants. 
Um, so it's a passion of yours, this yes. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah, I don't yeah. think it's been uh, taught or anything. I think I was born with it. You know, like mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. things you're yeah, just yeah, born yeah. with it. You don't even Sometimes know where it's from. Sometimes you have a click, don't because you? Because my parents are actually not, you know, they're architect and... Well, my mom is a handicraft teacher, mm -hmm. or was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, so maybe the crafty bit of that comes yes. in from, yes. Yeah, yes. from yes. that side. And it fitted my role here really well that I had yes. this background from farming. So I mm -hmm. knew about the, the uh, biology of the plant, if you want, so how they grow and, and yeah. you know, actually yeah. what, what yeah. they like. Yeah. Yeah. And then also my being married to a Maori, mm -hmm. and the cultural side came in and the wisdom that comes from that side. So what did you find? I mean, so coming from uh, Switzerland to Aotearoa, getting immersed in the Harakeke um, culture, mm -hmm. what did you find most interesting and most surprising? Most surprising maybe is that um, not more Pākehā know about Mataranga Māori. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and most surprising, because Switzerland is a very multicultural country, mm -hmm. so I grew up with a lot of different cultures. Right. As when I came to New Zealand, I found that it's very um, Western Pākehā white culture. Mm -hmm. um, all the education systems are built up on that. All the um, rules and laws mm -hmm. are guided by a Western culture. All the scientific way of doing things in the science world is mm -hmm. like this. So uh, that surprised me and the racism surprised me a mm -hmm. bit in mm -hmm. New Zealand. Um, but also I started to discover about myself through working with Māori. Right. and um, on a daily basis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also my limited awareness of and it may be possibly even acceptance of, of of another culture so it was a really um, I feel very fortunate that I have been immersed in this and I I'm, I'm glad that I was open enough to mm. to listen and let it let it get to me and come to me and receive the the mataranga because mm -hmm. it's so different to to uh, the te ao maori is, is quite different the view of the world is quite different mm -hmm. to a uh, uh, western view right, the, uh, right. Yeah. and uh, and i found that after one of the things i think we wanted to talk about was um kind of the difference, can they work together, yes. Mataranga Māori and the Western science, and yes. I would say absolutely. In fact, they can enrich each other. Mm -hmm. um, take in, what, the best, in what way in particular, yeah, you, you see? Take the best from both worlds. Um, for example, um, let's say DNA sampling we've done on our mm -hmm. uh, National New Zealand Flex Collection, we found out that some of the, each Harakeke bush here has a specific Māori name. Right which was given by the iwi or the hapu, where mm -hmm. it came from. Mm -hmm. But then we found out that quite a few are actually genetically the same, So, although they came from different places. So we thought, yeah. how is that possible? And, and started to give us the understanding of how um, harakiki plants were traded, just mm -hmm. like, because they were mm -hmm. vali very valuable plants. Yeah. And yeah. So they were traded and, when, and a new iwi would receive it as a gift. They would, the chief would possibly give it a new name, make mm -hmm. it their own. Mm -hmm. And um, so this gave us a little bit of an understanding how plants were moved. Also finding harakeke, let's say, on the Auckland Islands or you know, right. sub-Antarctic Islands where they yep. don't naturally grow. Uh, they were taken there by whalers and Maori fishing people and so. Mm -hmm. So it helps you understand these things. Um, uh, Maybe even for Māori it'll be interesting to, to see this, how things have travelled. and. So you're getting an idea of, of the, also the trading relationships and so on too, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah, see yeah. how things have have been dealt with and how it ha how valuable it was, mm -hmm. the harakeke, mm -hmm. if we just specifically talk about harakeke. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and so there must be aspects of this work that you find particularly challenging. Hmm. 
No. Actually, I, um, I don't find anything really challenging mm -hmm. as such. Um, the only thing which would be possibly challenging, but I don't experience it here, is if, if I would be withheld knowledge. You know how sometimes right. it's very secret, a certain type of knowledge, yes. and then you would kind of be stuck. Yes. But I have never encountered, never encountered that, with, that. A, with anyone, uh, right. not with Pakeha, not with Maori. Right. Uh, we're all, I've been fortunate. So you've got an open exchange of yeah, information. Yeah, which I do believe sometimes probably takes time. Mm. You know, you need to be prepared to be with a certain group of people for a while, right. and and I know that from Switzerland until they kind of warm up and yeah, are ready. Yeah, you have to build trust. Yeah, don't you, you have to build yeah, trust yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, that your yeah. knowledge that you share is actually yeah. in good hands. So it can't it can't be rushed. As right, such. right. I think that's right. Uh, something to consider. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have problems with um, patenting and trademarks and stuff like that too. That's a huge or is that an issue? <laughs> whole session for itself. <laughs> All the intellectual property yeah. um, issues yeah. uh, following Y262, um, Treaty of Waitangi guidelines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I, I feel very proud that Manaki Fenua is very open and very considered in this regard. And just listening to our name, um, Manaki Fenua mm. and Malenke Research, so we have the Māori name as our first name yes. and Lenke Research as our second name. So I think, yeah, I'm just fortunate again to be in this mm -hmm. in this environment here with, right, this, right. with this institution. So how do you do you interact with um, schools and educational institutions? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. I do. Um, mostly on a just going for a couple of hours talking on our mm -hmm. collection, um, maybe doing a little bit of, of harakeke weaving with them. Right. And, but I've just thought about it when I prepared myself for these questions. Um, I thought, um, what would I, you know, what advice would I give to teachers if mm -hmm. they would ask? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how they could incorporate both worlds, Mataranga Māori yeah. and the Western scientific world. Um, because we live in this Western world, mm -hmm. um, anything Mataranga Māori hasn't got as much support. Right. Also, through colonization, huge amounts were lost. Mm -hmm. And so what we have, I think, is it's like a treasure that we still have. Right. And a lot of the old people hold this treasure and I think they should be supported in sharing it and a great effort should be made to 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 keep this knowledge because to me um, Western science is fantastic mm -hmm. you can zoom in on something really specific and get some really specific fantastic in-depth answers yeah. as Mataranga Māori has more of a holistic approach mm -hmm. If I can say that as a Swiss person, <laughs> I'm not even sure if I'm <laughs> if I'm entitled to say, but that's how I feel anyway. Okay. I can only say what I feel. Uh, um, has a more of a holistic approach and looks how scientific facts are connected to each other mm -hmm, and how mm -hmm, they affect. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a I feel they have a wider view, and I think if that could be combined with Western science, it it would be such a win-win. And so if I could say something to a teacher when they say, what, you know, what should I incorporate into my class? I would say, first of all, go to a Treaty of Waitangi workshop. Right. Just learn about colonization, what it has done to, mm -hmm. to science, to Mataranga Māori, to the culture, to their culture and our culture, where mm -hmm. they're coming from. Um, as, uh, to me, I went to three workshops until right. I got it. I'm a, I'm a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> First, I knew it intellectually, you yeah. know, how you know something, yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I read the papers and all. Yes. But in the third one, it felt like it clicked and it became a part of my heart. Okay. And, and now I feel I'm entitled to sort of share it. And um, the second thing I would read the book called Healing Our History mm -hmm. by. Um, it says Robert Constantine and Joanna, mm -hmm. his daughter Joanna Constantine, fantastic book, going all the way back to 
Ireland, colonization, India, everything, and just to understand what is happening in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it gave me such a wide and compassion and understanding of both sides. Right. Yeah, so I would do that. And then I would say, um, go and, and participate in scientific things, like go to what I wrote some things down that, pe that could be done. Um, expose children to Western science. So do, for example, bio blitzes. I don't know if you've heard of them, where they go uh, with a school class mm -hmm. to a certain area, maybe uh, a river or, or a hillside or a mountainside yeah. or something, and record with the children. Mm -hmm. that don't know how long they do it 24 hours but right. I think uh, everything that they can find you know right. like animals and plants and mm -hmm. record mm -hmm. it all and it has been so successful those mm -hmm. bio blitzes and mm -hmm. children got first hand to work with microscopes and 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 uh, with a scientist who could explain mm -hmm. things so it's a very interactive but it, it fosters the love of science right yeah I found that in really fantastic and then nature watch I don't mm -hmm. know if you know mm -hmm. about nature yeah, yeah. such yeah. a great tool to record yes. things and if children get they're so good with computers so it'll be easy for them to yeah. <laughs> to find their way around there uh, maybe go visit the herbarium mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. learn about how how plants are kept and um, made ready for scientific studies um, I'm a bit biased because I live here and we have a, the largest herbarium <laughs> in New Zealand. <laughs> Field trips with scientists are fantastic. Uh, there are pro projects, uh, government funding called Unlock Unlocking Curious Minds. Yes, you might have yes, heard of no that. Curious Minds. Yeah, if you could yeah, get these into These guys know about Curious Minds. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, these are yeah. all fantastic yeah. things. But yeah. to balance it out, um, because that's done quite readily and yeah. it's quite popular, all these yeah. things. To balance it out, I think we should. Uh, teachers should expose children to mataranga Maori. Mm -hmm. So, go for an overstay night in a mar mm -hmm. marae. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. learn what's around there. Maybe do a bio blitz on the marae grounds, for right. example. Yeah. Um, what else did I say? Um, join Maori-led programs mm -hmm. because um, things that are orga organized by Tangata Finua are often quite different yeah. because of that holistic approach yeah. where the student is important, the teacher is important, the, mm -hmm. uh, the object, the, the project is important. So uh, it'll give them a different feeling and a different view on things. What else could be done? There's a, a project uh, link here, or Manaki Fenua did, called Ahi Pepe. It's the moss net. Mm -hmm. So just specific um, Maori lead projects where then things uh, um, like Literature is translated into both languages, so you'll have it for um, kuhanga reos, you know, right. for schools in te reo, yeah. and you got it for Western um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or Pakeha language schools. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, citizen science, basically. Yes. That, I think that's really fantastic. Works really for, and just making more of an effort to support Mataranga Māori in this way. So to summarise. Mm -hmm. You said I can't. I can't remember now. You, yep. you, said, you said there was such a rich vein of things that you said. Mm -hmm. um, can you can you recap those three or four so for for how to interact quickly, with the very, science yeah, different yeah. science? Yeah. So uh, Western science maybe bio blitz. Yeah. Um, learning about Nature Watch is mm -hmm, really cool. Mm -hmm. Go go to a scientific niwa or or mm -hmm. agri research or manaki yeah. whenua and spend the day somewhere you know yes. as a scientist yes with a class we have that regularly happening here at manaki whenua so that and in mataranga maori yeah. um do definitely as a, a overnight stay yeah, because it's important yeah, to marae. stay oh yeah, yeah how yeah. to sleep together you know yes. to all these things maybe do a um Oh, hang on, I'll switch <laughs> off my phone wherever it is. There you go. Yeah, stay at the Marae, uh, do something Maori led there, for example, maybe learn how to weave with harakeka, a mm. small object, mm. or um, learn uh, some karakias or some protocols around harvesting or, or around um, going into the bush 
harvesting plants for mm -hmm. healing, for example, like kawa kawa has become so popular right. for making healing creams yes. for eczema yes. and stuff. Yes. Yes. Um, just little projects. I'll switch the phone <laughs> off. Excuse me. <laughs> so, um, yes, I think just in immersing yourself in Te Ao Māori, mm, I think right. that will be, and, and keeping an open heart because it'll feel weird a little bit first yes. because it'll be so different to what we're experienced yeah. to yeah, in yeah. the Western world, you know? Yes. And that and that getting used to something new exactly. can be quite challenging and sometimes a little yes. bit painful. But the, yeah. the thing is to persist. Oops, I've dropped a bit of paper. I think, you know what I think? The pain only happens if we resist. Yes. But if we are open, like, children mostly are. Yes. It might be painful for the teacher, but never mind. Yeah. <laughs> the children will have a ball because they have this openness and uh, still hopefully receptiveness for new things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, even learning to sing for, for us Western Pākehā, singing is mm -hmm. like, oh no, nobody yeah. wants to yeah, sing yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. because we've lost it our great grandparents they were singing and playing piano and all this it's not like it western world has never mm -hmm. done it that's right it's just um we haven't been we haven't practicing, practicing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. so and it, it does uh, affect a human um yes. in a very positive way i yes. find yes yeah so You've given us a whole load of ideas. There, can you give me any examples of how in its everyday activities Manaki Fenua um, tends to support this linking of science and um, Mataranga, Mataranga Māori? Māori. Yes, um, so for Manaki Fenua in general, it's mm. kind of in our policies, yeah. I think you'd say. Yeah. Um, uh, it's called Vision Mataranga, uh -huh. and so we try, and not just try, we actually do um, interact with Evie and have whole projects. Mm -hmm. uh, a good example is um, the Manawa honey from the Tuhoi people mm -hmm. at, um, in the North Island, right. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, we're working very closely with two hope people. We just started to um, work with people in Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, some different hapu, different right. names, uh, on ag more of agricultural um, projects and horticultural projects. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, very much so. Growing um, traditional Maori crops or? Sometimes it is a combination. Right. Um, this, um, I am not certain, I haven't got all the exact okay. specific details, but often it is um, treaty land which became available through mm -hmm. the treaty settlements, and then what do we do, do with we do it? it? Yeah. Maori have certain ideas what they would like to do, yeah. and then uh, working together for the benefit of Tangata Fina to, so that they can... Um, have the best outcome. So yes. using a little bit of scientific Western science and yeah. using heaps of mataranga Māori and mm -hmm. combine it and just create the best outcome for... Okay. <laughs> That's why I switched the phone off. It's haunted. You have to cut that out. <laughs> I said power off? Oh, you have to say it twice. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> So, yes, uh, yeah. very much so. Okay. Also, um, personally for myself, mm -hmm. um, I've always enjoyed it because I was all weaving. Raranga is, right. you know, the, the art of, of uh, Maori people, of Tangata mm -hmm. Whenua. So, um, I was the student, basically. Right. I was learning and I was absorbing knowledge. And, and so now you're passing it on. And, and, and I pass it on, on and I absorb more mm -hmm. and... I see more of we all work together um, yeah. for and uh, and respect each other in their specific fields. Right. Like for, I can't even say. Uh, well, I am not a scientist, so I can't even really, with authority, talk on Western science. Mm -hmm. Nor can I talk on Maori kaupapa as such. But I can talk what I absorbed and yes. what I observed 
in what feels right to me. And in a way you're in an ideal situation because you yes. sort of stand apart from all of these different streams. Actually, and you're yes. You're immersing yourself in them yeah. and observing yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I feel definitely enriched by the whole experience. Mm. The one thing that I did when I went to this third Treaty of Odangi yeah. <laughs> workshop, uh, I really felt I had this urge of I really want to help to fil um, facilitate mm -hmm. this Mataranga Māori connecting it with people so that Māori people are actually leaning things. So I thought I would like, I knew we needed a, another person to work in this Pahara Keke um, because it just became too big yeah. for one person because yeah. I'm only supposed to work half day here and half day mm -hmm. work um, in the herbarium. And um, and so I thought, in my mind, I said, this is going to be a Maori person who comes here. Mm. I, I choose mm -hmm. to, you know. And just like that, a lovely young lady, uh, Mihi, um, came to harvest here every now and then and showed an extreme interest. She was highly qualified in, uh, through the Wananga mm -hmm. or Aotearoa mm -hmm. uh, in her weaving. And one day I just thought, right, I'm going to ask her. And yeah. she's been working here for more than a year. And so I feel very kind of proud. Good, this way, good, good. yeah. Well, I think. Oh. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? That, um... Let me look at my amazing list. I think you covered everything really well. Yes, it's been a good conversation. Yes. Okay. Well, kia ora, Katerina, um, and I'd like to thank um, Bradley White for recording this session. I've enjoyed our discussion today, and have learned heaps. I hope our SGLP audience finds this discussion valuable. Thanks again to both of you. Thank it's been, you, Mike. It's been a real pleasure coming. to be here. Oh, lovely. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>